Do you ever feel that YouTube guides aren't in-depth enough? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have a solution for you, and it is GameLeap. GameLeap is an educational video platform that helps you get the most out of Dota. Each hero is cleverly devised into special courses with lots of videos, which help you master all the finer points of how to play a player really well. And it's done by 7K plus MMR players. And don't forget, if you sign up for GameLeap, not only does it help you win more and get your MMR up, it also supports my channel. Hello, this is BSJ, and this is going to be a different type of video where I'm going to be analyzing a 3K level game that I've been playing on my Smurf Climb that is really meant to show you many different things about split pushing and map awareness, but something that really ties into one of the most distinguishable skill difference indicators for any level of play between a 7K and 5K player, between a 7K and a 3K player. It's just one of those things that ties in a lot of aspects of Dota that are really, like it just shows so much when it comes to split pushing and map awareness. So what I'm gonna start off with is the factors that go into these ideas and why they're so important and why they show so much difference in skill level. And the first thing is to properly understand that there's a lot of things to consider. I mean, this list of things is your win condition in a game. What does your team do well? What does the enemy team do well? I.e. pushing, kill potential, roaching. You have to think about what your team does well. Well, the catch potential of the enemy team, uh, that has a lot to do with your idea of split pushing. Like I, in this game, I'm a storm spirit, so I'm, my biggest concern is their ability to kill me if I'm going to split push. So every game, you have to think about what they have to kill you with or what their hero's potential to kill you with. Some heroes kill you by mobility, like a Storm Spirit. Some heroes, like Legion Commander OD, kill you by catching you, but they're not very mobile in the first place. So a lot of heroes offer different ways to kill you, and it's recognizing those ways of killing you that is really important part at the beginning of every game to establish your goal as a split pusher, to establish how much you're going to be split pushing, and establish if you want to split push, how you are going to go about doing that. Meaning, are you going to abuse your mobility? Are you going to abuse your survivability? Are you going to abuse how fast you clear creep waves? Are you going to abuse the fact that they don't have mobility? Like, what like what do they have that kills you? So right away, I'm going to take pause in this game and say, look at their lineup and say, what do they have that kills me? So I really think that uh, the biggest thing that also goes on top of this is if I want to look for solo kills, which is a big part of split pushing, what do I need to be concerned about? Meaning like a lot of teams, they have like a dazzle plus like another defensive support, don't really have a way of punishing you for going for kills as long as you have a way out. But on the other hand, this team has global silence. They have astral so the rest of the team can catch up. They have X marks the spot, so if I get caught up by that, that if they have Skywrath stage silence plus any other hero on their team, I'm probably dead, at least until I get really farmed. So that's one of those things where I look at this game and immediately think, well, it's going to be very hard for me to get solo kills any time in the first 20 to 30 minutes of the game, unless a unique situation arises, which they're going to be, and we're going to talk about them as they come up. But I'm not going to try to force kills because their team is very defensive, their team is very counter-initiate heavy, and that's something I keep in mind right away as a split pusher. The next thing is they have duel, they have X marks the spot, they have Silence, and they have Astral. Those are the things that catch me out. So right away, I'm going to I'm gonna think about itemizing against those things and playing around those concepts. None of their heroes have solo kill potential on me. Even like a Legion Commander dueling me, she needs to have like a Skywrath Mage with her. She needs to have an OD hitting me. She needs to have a Kunkka Torrent and Debo follow-up. So it's looking at all their heroes. None of them exactly have solo kill potential on me. And that's really important to think about as well. Because as long as I see four heroes on the map, or I know that, like, based on map awareness, that if Skywrath Mage was just showing mid, that if Legion Commander's top and the other three are showing bottom, that I have a set amount of time before Skywrath Mage gets to my lane and offers kill potential on me. So these are all concepts that go into split pushing, and things we're going to be talking about as this game progresses. So, pretty much, these concepts not only tie into your ability to split push, but concepts that a lot of players at lower levels don't, they understand that it occurs, but they don't do it themselves, is the idea of cutting creep waves. This is something where if you, like, honestly, the prime examples of this are like Eternal Envy and Arteezy in terms of cutting creep waves. But being able to recognize when to cut creep waves is really important based on the, all the things I just talked about. These decisions and understandings are what make cutting creep waves, like, easier possible, like, your understanding is just going to be that much greater. And what I mean by that is if I recognize that I can cut a creep wave behind the enemy team as a Storm Spirit because they have to catch up to me first and they don't have a hero that immediately closes the gap other than, like, you know, max blink range, then that will affect my decision to be able to split push. But if they have heroes like Lion that can TP into a tower right away the minute I show myself 
on this like on the creep wave split pushing and cutting the creep wave and he just blink hexes me and sets up for somebody else to kill me with him then it makes my ability to cut creep waves much weaker unless lion's like showing on the map or i know he tp'd somewhere else but like that all that being said i'm looking at this kind of lineup and i think i'm gonna probably be able to cut creep waves and it's all about as i go on throughout the rest of the game when i'm cutting creep waves and i'm talking about my decision making it's all about recognizing the ability to do so and why the enemy team can or cannot stop you from cutting creep waves and the reason why i emphasize cutting creep waves is it's a very integral part of split pushing because when it comes to split pushing you have to ask yourself why you're split pushing and what split pushing accomplishes so that like brings me to another point so split pushing right off the bat is that you have to recognize you're getting more farm than the enemy team because you're by yourself they are generally more grouped up and what that generally means for you is if they're five in one lane and your team is four in one lane and you're by yourself because of you know how xp share works in this game you're technically getting twice as much xp and farm around the map than the enemy team is if your team's together as four you're by yourself and the enemy team's together as five so it's one of those things where that's what split pushing really does for you but it also is really important to recognize what it doesn't do for you a lot of heroes that are good at split pushing are high mobility high survivability and that's because it's like if you're a drow Meaning, like, it doesn't mean a drow can't split push, but if you're a drow and a PA finds you and throws a dagger at you, unless you have a shadow blade and they have no detection, you are going to die. That's just life. That's how it happens. Let's just take a second to laugh at my death to neutrals there. But yeah, so what I mean by that is, like, you know, drow's not a particularly good split pusher because if uh, one of the two heroes find her, a lot of combinations kill her. But heroes like Storm Spirit, Ember Spirit, Slark, Naga, you know, they can all push lanes safely for whatever reason. Naga has illusions, Storm Spirit has high mobility with his light ball lightning, Slark has dark pact plus all of his escape ability, Ember Spirit has his remnant, Morphling has replicates, like all these heroes that can split push, anti mage has blink, have high escape ability and survivability and it makes it so that more heroes are required to kill them, meaning higher coordination, it makes it easier to move around the map. Like if it only takes one hero to kill you, it's much harder to split push because you have to worry about whenever that hero is off the map. But the big thing here is noticing how at the beginning of the game I recognized I don't have high kill potential on them because of their ability to counter initiate. So look at how I've behaved in the first, you know, after six minutes, after the landing stages happen. I'm just farming. That's like an important thing to recognize. In some games, you'll have to go for kills. But in this game in particular, I'm just farming. So we're going to bring up the net worth for the sake of you being able to monitor this as I go along in this replay. But I'm just farming. Like, maybe I'll do little things like I'm doing right now, but I'm just going to be farming. I'm looking to, ex like, extend my lead as much as possible. And you're going to notice here that I even go for a kill, and that's what ends up happening. You saw right there. I was, like, trying to force the limits, seeing if I could kill this OD because I had a drought aura, and... That's like a perfect example of I go for the kill on OD, I get Astral, Legion Commander TP's in, and I get dueled. And that's like exactly the fear I had, and that's basically me going against my own knowledge of the game and getting punished for it. And that's like an important thing to recognize. And you're going to see how right after that I'm like, oh yeah, dumb me, I'm just going to go back to farming until I have the proper items to, to get the kills or, you know, go for solo kills that I, that I talked about at the beginning of this replay. So basically we're going to be fast forwarding all the way till about 16 minutes where I want to show you the first example of recognizing how game awareness and knowledge of what the enemy team's information is giving to you allows you to get kills that most players in 3k as well as anywhere like you know the the strength of people's ability to do this increases with their MMR it's very drastic uh, when you see it as a if once you understand it as a 7k player and maybe as you guys are watching it's very clear how this is such a strong distinguishment between 3k and 7k players and that whole concept of is understanding the information that is being presented to you by the enemy team but not only that but also if you're say on the dire recognizing what information I have about them and what I mean by that is if I, you know, you're going to see it coming up right here in just a second. I'm going to be going back to base. I'm going to be going back to top. And I, this is my first example. So right away, I go on this silencer. And we're going to rewind because I, I didn't mean it for it to be this fast. I'm going to go on this silencer. And this silencer is farming alone. So let's just, let's just a perfect example of him not recognizing what information I am being presented with on the other team as a storm spirit. If I look at the map, I see OD mid. And I see the other three bottom. And this silencer is far, away, far enough away from a tower. I know that if I go on him, I'll have time to kill him before his team is able to help him. And he doesn't see this. This would be completely different if anyone on the enemy team wasn't showing. If Skyrath Mage wasn't showing. If Kunkka wasn't showing. If Legion Commander wasn't showing. He could possibly be doing this. Because what if I go on him and the Skyrath Mage is right behind him. Or the Legion Commander is right behind him. She blink duels me. I get global. They TP other people in and I die. 
But because I see everyone on the enemy team, I immediately go for this kill. And it's really important to recognize as a 3k player the mistakes you're making. It's not just about what you know, it's also recognizing what the other team knows. And that's by, right now I'm telling you that I see all four other heroes on the map, so if I go on the silencer and for some reason can't kill him, worst case scenario, I just walk away. And that's like an important decision making as a, as a split pusher. What's the worst thing that can happen if I go for this kill, if I go for this creep wave cut? Like sometimes it's like worst case scenario, I mess up and I die. Sometimes it's worst case scenario, I mess up and I lose all my mana as like a storm spirit and I have to go back to base. But right now, worst case scenario, I walk away. So I'm going to go on him. I'm going to get the kill. And here's what's going to happen. This is something that's very common when you go for kills as a split pusher. The enemy team's TPing in. You see on the minimap, they TP two people in. But right now, I see that OD's getting gone on in the mid lane. You know, I'm not going to move my camera, but you saw OD getting gone on the mid lane. And Legion Commander is bottom. So now I know, in my knowledge, that if there's people reacting, it could possibly only be the two supports, being Kunkka and Skyrath. So I see Skyrath chasing after me. I see Kunkka behind him. And right away... I see the Kunkka separate from the Skyrath. And I know that this Skyrath Mage alone does not offer him kill potential on me. And this is important. Like, I know Legion Commander's not there, and I know OD's not there. So I know that the Kunkka's the only help. And now I see Kunkka running around the trees. I see that it's going to take him. He's going to try to cut me off. So I'm immediately just going to turn back onto this Skyrath Mage and kill him. And that's something where, like, you know, a lot of 3k players, this, this doesn't happen unless there's a high distinguishment in skill, skill level between players like i can do this in my 5k average games it happens a lot if you watch my 5k average games where like or even like rtz in a 5k average game you'll see him just like do these kind of plays where he, you're like what is the enemy team doing they're just giving him kills but that's like what it means to like the decision making all the like that going into those kills was all me recognizing what i knew about them and them playing the game in a wrong way like that's how you recognize if someone's out of position it's not just that what you know about the game but it's like if you know that they know that you know, meaning like, I know that sounds weird, but I know that that silencer knows that if he, he has the knowledge to know that I know where his teammates are, like if he chooses to think about it, there's no secret that his Legion commander is showing bottom and his OD showing mid and the other three heroes are showing bottom. An example, like a counter example to what I just talked about, me knowing that he knows that I know is like, say like the Legion commander is jungling. He may not know that I know where the Legion commander is, but she could be under a ward of mine. So that's an example where I know where the Legion Commander is, and I know that he's by himself, but he may not know that I know that he's by himself. And I know that's like a lot of knowing, but like my point being is like, that's something that's really important to think about. Because at high levels, it's like, you know, the higher you go, the more mind games set in. Um, and that's why like jungling heroes like Slark, even after getting a Shadow Blade, may be more effective than farming lanes at times if you don't have to, because you just simply present a threat to the enemy team. And a lot of times when you hear like 5k level players and above and streamers especially raging at their teammate Axe or like teammate Legion Commander, for like farming a creep wave when they shouldn't have to show their hero it's because they're like wow like you're telling the enemy team like we're here so they can go farm the the rest of the map so that's like an important part of split pushing you know i said like you, the common three game mistakes you have to think about what the inf information the other team has and make a lot of your decisions off that so silencer choosing to stay top after knowing that i have that information is him basically not having map awareness that's basically what we're seeing right there so like i already mentioned basically if legion was off the map instead of showing bottom. I could not go for that kill on Silencer. But because they're all showing, I'm recognizing that I have the kill potential to do so. So this next example, which is gonna be coming up, is understanding how long it takes people to rotate. So right now, I see their heroes in the mid lane. I see, I see three heroes, and I see one TPing in. And, you know, it's one of those things where Skyrath Mage isn't gonna be solo farming. Like, if you just, like, based on my understanding of Dota, the, the, the four heroes I see are those. And the one I don't see is Skyrath Mage. And he's just not going to be solo farming, period. He's going to be, like, somewhere in the vicinity of the enemy team. If it's, like, the other the other hero that wasn't showing was an anti-mage, he's probably farming. It's all thinking about, you know, what hero is missing. So, right away, I'm farming this jungle camp. And I'm not 100% sure if they have wards, but let's let's find out if they do. Let's find out if they have wards. They don't have any wards. Um, that, is, that is important. But at the same time, they see my teammate Slark top. And they have a ward in my jungle, so they know I'm not bottom. Like, if you look at their knowledge of the game, I, they, they don't know where I am. Uh, like, it, or they know where I am because they don't see me, is the best way to word it. They don't see me farming bottom. They don't see me in my own woods. 
uh, I'm not an ancienting because I'm a storm spirit. And so the only place I can be is above them. So they're going to immediately run towards me. And this is me recognizing how long it's going to take them to get there. So I'm farming this camp and I see them immediately head towards me. You're going to see all their arrows just run to me. I have this camp right here to farm as well. So at 1712, I'm recognizing that I have about 10 to 15 seconds before they're going to get to me. So I immediately ball light into this wave. I have to get out of here as fast as I can. I don't even kill the catapult, noticing that I recognize exactly how long I have before they get to me. It's been about 12 seconds. So instead of immediately TPing out, I wait for them to get close enough to me that I wasted all their time. Notice how the silencer, the Skywrath Mage, all ran top. And I TP bottom immediately. And this is one of those things where that push top is going to open me up to push bottom. If I never did that push top, they could easily have two heroes, three heroes setting up on the bottom lane ready to kill me here. So because I know that I have time before they get back to bottom based on travel time, based on TPing, and I see them on the map right now, the Skyrath Mage and the Koka, something that should really never occur, two supports showing themselves in a lane, very common 3k mistake, um even 5k mistake is you know they're not getting anything out of showing here like one of them's going to get the farm period they're going to get the same amount of xp but by having both of them show i feel perfectly safe farming bottom lane something to really think about as a support player as any like offlink here hero with kill potential is there's no reason to show two heroes with kill potential in the exact same lane absolutely no reason but as my hero i feel absolutely safe to continue farming bottom and that's exactly what i'm going to do and it's like, this is me recognizing the limitations of the enemy team in regards to mobility, knowing that if I go top, they have, they're going to take a little while to come back bottom. But now, they're all off the map. So I go back to jungling. Notice how I, don't, I no longer feel safe on, on, in the lane. Because as right there, you recognize that this guy with mage was off the map. He TP bottom, and he shows himself. It's like even weaker for him to show himself as a 3k player. Um, a 7k Skyrath would have TP'd bottom potentially and then not shown himself in lane, so I still don't know where he is. Um, which is like means that he could have TP bottom. It means he could have smoked from their jungle and ran into me in my jungle. Um, but by showing bottom, he gives me the information that I need to do what I need to do as a split pusher. So sometimes when you're watching high level players or players that are streaming, you'll see them go wonky builds, like items that you generally wouldn't build. In almost every game of Storm Spirit, like in a 7k game, I'd be going Treads Orchid after my Bloodstone. But the problem in here is that I'm recognizing, quite honestly, that my teammates aren't very good. And that I'm going to have to split push to win this game. So the first item I build right after Bloodstone is Jules. And if you look at the enemy team, Skyrath Mage Silence, Global Silence, Kunkka X can be dodged by Jules. I immediately remove three heroes from their team as a threat by building one item. And that's like the whole idea that I'm going with because I know I have to split push. So this is what I talked about at the beginning of the video, itemization. Normally I'd go Treads Orchid because I want to fight them. I want to look for solo kills. But I already recognize that my solo kill potential is low because of the nature of their lineup and counter initiation. And that my win condition is by split pushing and not dying. So once again, I forced out bottom lane and then I go immediately back to top. And this is an example right here that I get asked about on stream all the time. And people ask me, do I go to the lane first or do I go to the creep camp? And there's a lot of factors that go into this and I'm just going to present one of them today that's by far the most simple and should really guide a lot of your decisions and it's something where just like every rule in Dota is correct like 95% of the time and the exceptions are what it means to truly understand the game. Um, but we're going to give you the simple answer and we'll in other videos we'll go more into this concept. Whether or not I go farm the lane or if I farm the creep camp first. So the most basic answer for why I farm the creep camp first here is looking at the timer. If I go straight to the lane, I am going to farm the lane, and then it's gonna be about 19 minutes. And you have to recognize, whenever you're pushing an off lane like this, almost every time you'll have time to farm the jungle, like right afterwards. You're gonna push the top lane in, or bottom lane if you're on dire, and then you're gonna have time to farm the jungle. So I'm thinking about the time I'm gonna be farming the jungle after I farm the creep wave. If I go straight to the creep wave right now, then I'm gonna be farming one big camp, because it's 1850. But if I clear the big camp right now, and go to the lane next, I'll have farm the big camp now, and then the big camp's going to spawn again in 10 seconds, and then I'll farm it again on the way back. So that's really the simple reason why I just decided to do this. If it was 1830, for instance, in the game right now, I would go clear that top wave first because it's more dangerous farm, and then I would walk back, clear the big camp at 1850 or so, and then let it spawn again and clear it again. But that's like, that's what I mean by it's just a simple way of deciding, but it's something you should think about every time you're wondering, should I go to lane first? Should I farm a creep camp first? Should I stack it? Check the timer. And that's my decision right here. So you're going to notice I farm the creep camp, go immediately to the wave, 
and then it's going to be the 19 minute mark so i now farm the two creek camps again so the next decision that has to be made is generally speaking what jungling does for you is that it gives you something to do while you don't have information that presented to you to split push safely so for instance if there was no fight going on mid here so i didn't feel safe to continue pushing top then i would have immediately gone back to the big camp that's what i would have done because i don't know where they are and it's a safe place to farm i have a ward like i they like i'll be able to see them coming all these reasons make it very safe for me but now the second i see them fighting bottom or in the mid lane excuse me i immediately head right back to top knowing that top is the more dangerous farm so while they're fighting i want to get that out of the way 